All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine and Pipeliner CRM. And today I'm delighted to be joined by Gary Ridge from WD40. How are you doing, Gary? Good, hey, John. How are you? Good. And Gary is the Chief Executive Officer and Board Member at WD40. And you've been with the company since 1987, correct? 32 fabulous years. Yeah. And so what I wanted to talk to Gary about is how he built... Uh, a culture and what uh, his his concept of leadership is, you know, because um, WD Forty is acknowledged as having a you know a remarkable culture, and obviously it's a it's a brand name that's you know some people don't even say uh, you know hand me the oil, they say hand me the WD Forty, right? Which is uh, you you know you've arrived when people are using your, the name of your company to uh, as the, the name of an actual you know uh, thing, right? <laughs> Um, so, so Gary, what what does what does true leadership mean to you? Um, to to me, John, it's pretty simple. It's taking care of the people who do the wonderful work every day. You know, Aristotle said in three hundred and eighty four BC, pleasure in the job puts perfection in the work. So, if we're to expect people to uh, perform at their magnificence, then our job as a leader is to enrich their soul, not suck their soul <laughs> so how do you enrich uh, because let's face it i mean people come to work they have different types of jobs and sometimes you know those jobs are you know, sometimes they're exciting sometimes they're not we all have days when it's tough or we all have periods of time when we're working on things that maybe don't you know excite us enough so how do you how do you bring that out particularly um during those periods well there's a few things we think about if you can imagine a place where you go to work every day you make a contribution to something bigger than yourself. You learn something new, you feel safe, and you go home happy. So what have we talked about there? Purpose-driven organizations that are, that are really invested in learning, that have a safe environment. You know, we say here, we don't make mistakes. We have learning moments mm -hmm. because most people are, are, are afraid of fear and we don't want them to be fearful. And then we want people to go home happy, so it's okay to have a bit of fun, and um, and that's really some of the things that are really important to us, John. And so, um, how how does your culture manifest itself in in how people operate within the country within the company? What what is the what is the tangible uh, examples of that culture in action? Well, I think it's best reflected in what our why statement is for the company. It is. We exist to create positive, lasting memories by solving problems in factories, homes, and workshops of the world. So our one of our values, our second-rate value in the company is creating positive, lasting memories. So what you'll see in the organization is a group of people who are dedicated to, in the most, creating positive memories, not focusing on the negative. So there's a happiness that's here. If you were to, we call ourselves a tribe, not a team. Mm -hmm. The reason we call ourselves a tribe is one of the biggest desires we have as human beings is to belong. Right. You know, you and I have probably, and your listeners have probably left an organization, a party, or even a relationship because we didn't feel like they belong. Uh, here you belong. Mm -hmm. So we treat people with respect and dignity. We care about them. We're candid with them. We hold them accountable. Mm -hmm. And we expect to be responsible for each other. Yeah, because I think you just hit on something important there. Because sometimes uh, when people talk about, uh, you know, a culture where you know, get everybody excited and, um, you know, passionate about everything, they start to think, uh Okay, well, how does uh, how does that gel with accountability? With uh, you know, when people maybe aren't living up to the culture, or maybe afraid of conflict or confrontation or whatever. So, how do you how do you balance the two parts of that? Well, I think that you know, good leadership is a balance between being tough minded and tender hearted, mm -hmm. and the genius is in the end, in the middle. So, you know, we want to make sure that with our people. Uh, understand, guided by our values, understand what we expect of each other, and we have open open conversations about that. So we talk about no lying, no faking, no hiding. Mm -hmm. We want to create an atmosphere where we can be real with each other um, around an agreed set of values, an agreed set of strategic uh, drivers, and an agreed desired outcome, and then just be good, honest people around it. Yeah, and that's uh, and in some ways. So, how does that when when maybe people come to your company from 
other cultures and other organiza- other organizations who have different cultures because let's face it uh, in a lot of business the culture is the opposite it's almost like you hide everything maybe not you know you're not that honest and and you avoid uh, you basically try and hide and make sure that nobody ever sees anything mistakes or anything like that and it's a real kind of cover your behind kind of culture so when people come to your organization how do you acclimate them to something completely different well, even before they come to the organization, if you were to go to our careers page, the first thing that pops up is our values. And we talk a lot about this is what we stand for in the company, the things that you and I have just been chatting about. Um, one of the greatest advantages we have is there are a lot of people who want to work for a right. company like ours. So, that, you know, 65% of people who go to work every day in the U.S. hate their jobs. Mm-hmm. Um, that, that's a very rich pool of talent that we that we are able to go into. So we when we start interviewing and talking to people, we we really talk a lot about our values and our culture and this is the sort of environment a lot of people want to be in that environment. Then when they come to the company and they actually, you know, do get employed if they do. Um you know, we have a, a good onboarding system, but I think if they've only realized at that time, it's it's probably too late. I, our job is really before they join us to see if this is something that they would feel comfortable with. Yeah, and it's also an interesting thing because it's not always the company, right? Because it's an interesting thing is that you know, maybe people who have uh, less positive experiences at work, uh, they can move from company to company and it kind of follows them because it's, um, and they're actually the co- the common denominator. So I guess if you're going to go and work for WD-40, you got to look at those values and say, is that actually me? You know, look in the mirror and say, is that honestly me? Or do I want to be that? Mm-hmm. Or do yeah. I want to be that precisely? Yeah, yeah. Well, we yeah, there, there are some people that have come from some of those toxic environments that, you know, you've kind of alluded to Mm -hmm. that when they come here, it takes them a while to actually trust Mm -hmm. because it's very, very strange. You know, they're not used to that sort of environment that, well, really, can we be honest? Is it okay to make a mistake? And it's very important that the behavior of the leaders in the organization reflect the true culture of the organization. Mm -hmm. For example, uh, we, we don't call ourselves managers here. We're all coaches. Right. I'm a coach. I'm a second coach. So you don't report to a manager, you report to a coach. What's the job of the coach? The job of the coach is to spend a lot of time in the locker room, a lot of time on the sideline, a lot of time observing the play, not to play on the field. Right. And our job, that's how we see our job. Yeah. So how do you prepare people for that? Because um, most people are not uh, innately good coaches, right? It's not a skill that most people um, have. And we see that constantly in, in when people get promoted to management or leadership positions. And then they, you know, somebody says, oh, you need to coach your people. And they're like, yeah, well, I would. I just have no idea what I'm doing. Or worse, they they remember whatever coaching experience they had maybe in high school or something. And they try to apply that. So these, I'm going to tell you exactly what to do and you do it and and you and you keep doing it until you get it right so how do you prepare people to be to be coaches well not only to be fair coaches but to be be leaders mm-hmm. you know um learning and teaching is the number one attribute of a tribal organization and we invest a lot of time and a lot of treasure in training in our organization in fact i think over the last three to five years we've done twenty seven thousand hours of yeah. Uh, training and development in the company, most of it internally driven. Mm-hmm. And it's a lot of it is about leadership. We we have a, a program in the company called Leadership Laboratory. And um, it's a three uh, syllabus course that anyone can take. And we spend a lot of it actually teaching the attributes of leadership. You know, what are the what is the what do you have to understand about yourself to be a leader? How do you act in times of conflict? you know, all of these sort of things. So this doesn't come easy. You know, building a a culture is simple, not easy, Mm -hmm. and time is not your friend. So consistency is very important. Yeah, and it's interesting you, you you say that on on the training development because um, you know I I ran some training companies in the past and performance improvement and I always said to people is that if you if you got a hundred CEOs in a room and you said how many of you think training is important? A hundred hands would go up. 
And then if you follow that up and you said, how many of you have set aside significant budget for training this year? Maybe five hands would go up. Uh, and so, uh, so it's a conscious decision to invest in the training mm -hmm. and development of your organization, uh, of your organization, right? And so, yeah. how do you how do you balance that? Because people always say, "Oh, well, you know, we're so busy, um, you know, we can't take time out to train." I mean, what's your answer to that? Well, Nelson Mandela said, "Education is the most powerful tool we can use to change the world." Mm -hmm. I would say training and development in an organization is the most powerful tool we have to improve the performance of an organization. So it's a matter of prioritization. You know, you, people can make excuses, um, but, you know, I, I think that anyone will tell you that if you're going to win a gold medal at the Olympic Games, you trained a lot. Um, so, you know, I think also they think training sucks resources. Well, if you develop it in a in a practical and effective way, 70% of the best learning happens on the job. Mm -hmm. So, you know, a lot of our training and development is actually on the job training and development. We have it embedded as part of your job. Right. Um, and so, and then this, the other things that we're doing in our training programs is teaching people how to better use their time. We mm -hmm. only have time, talent, treasure, and technology, and none of them are abundant. So we have to make deliberate choices. So in a, as in anything, life's a, a, a series of good or bad choices. Yeah, and I'm glad you mentioned that because this is a big um, kind of soapbox item of mine is is making choices because obviously to be successful and, you know, how you've been successful with, with WD-40, you obviously have very good focus, right? You need to focus people on the things that matter. Um, so how do you do that? Because people tend, especially nowadays, people get so distracted and are so easily distracted and focus on too many things or and, and don't want to focus on on particular things because focusing on, on one or two things actually requires you making choices, like you said. Well, I think it's important. It comes from strategy down. Mm -hmm. We have we, we have a, we have very clear strategic drivers, five of them. Those strategic drivers are put in place to help people make choices on how they are going to allocate their time, their talent, and their treasure and their technology going forward. The other thing that we do is I wrote a book with Ken Blanchard called mm -hmm. Helping People Win at Work. In that book, we talk about how most people – disappoint people because there's not clarity around what's expected from each other. So we have very defined goals. We have described from those goals what an A looks like. So if, you know, if we agree to do something together, I would ask you, so how will I get an A from you, John? You say, right. this is what an A looks like. And we agree. So now I know what it looks like. I now have to how to go and, and get that A. So I think clarity is important. And then ongoing feedback and communication. The job of a leader is not to mark someone's paper. It's to help them get an A. Mm -hmm. So how, how do, what does that A look like? And then how am I going to help sweep out of your way the things that stop you from getting your A? My job is to sweep things out of your way. And we often ask ourselves the question, it's okay about what we're going to start, but what are we going to stop? Right. Al Reese wrote a great book years ago called Focus, Your Future Depends on It. And I read it back in 1989, 1999. Well, very impactful because we can't do it all and that's mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, and, and that's a fantastic point that you raised there because I think that is the hardest thing is if um, when you when you sit around in a strategic planning or any other kind of planning session, everybody can come up with new ideas and new things that we could be doing or things extra things that we could be doing. But when you do ask that question, you go, this is all great. Let's put a list up on the board of things we're going to stop doing. Suddenly everybody sits back and goes, mm. it's the toughest thing in the world, but you can't, but you, you have to revisit all the time, right? And, and figure out the things you have to, you have well, to stop because you just get creep otherwise, right? You know, it, it's, it's, and it's also questioning whether what you're doing is actually achieving mm -hmm. what you attended it to achieve. It may have just become habit. Mm -hmm. um, and you can maybe get rid of, you know, we know we can all get rid of bad habits. <laughs> Exactly. I have thousands of them. I'm consciously incompetent, so I'm... <laughs> I'm I'm just unconsciously incompetent, but that's beside the point. Um, uh, okay, so um, in the last few moments that we have here, what are some other um, what are some other pieces of advice you would give to somebody to build a a very strong culture and to be a better leader? 
The thing that I think fails most leaders is where ego eats empathy instead of empathy eating ego. Mm -hmm. It's as a leader, it's not about you. It's about the people you lead. And, you know, you need to make sure that, you know, when someone says they have a, a big ego, what does that mean? They have a big self. So servant leadership is about you are there to help people step into the best version of their personal self every day. It's not about you. And in most cases, you'll be probably wrong and roughly right. <laughs> I love that. That's fantastic, Gary. Okay, before we go, um, if people want to find out more about you and uh, and obviously about WD40, it's wd40company.com. It's very easy to find. But if they want to find more about you and, and your philosophy, where would they go? Uh, I have a website, www.thelearningmoment.net. And I'm also on LinkedIn. I write articles and publish on there. So they can find me there. Excellent. So my name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine, Pipeliner, CRM. Gary, this has been a pleasure. And I'll see you all for another expert insight interview really soon. Thank you. Cheers.